All right, traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is 727, July 27, 2016. Uh, let me know if you can hear me and see the chart uh, or the charts, my screen. Once they have confirmation of that, I will uh, jump into it. All right, so right off the bat, I've got questions here from Mir asking about, um, he says, hello, everyone in the room. Uh, when is the BOJ meeting? So the BOJ meeting is, um, well, it depends, I guess, where you are in the world. But if you are in the United States, uh, say on the East Coast or uh, in the Midwest, it would be uh, basically probably Thursday night around 11.30. It could be Friday morning around 1.30 or 2 in the morning. Um, okay, so Amir's in Dubai. So for you, it's going to be on Friday. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time. 9 p.m. there. Okay. So yeah, uh, what, you know, it, it's, it's, it's Friday in, in Japan though. Um, when they do that. So, uh, typically the, um, the rule of thumb for the BOJ is that at least it used to be, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any r rules any, anymore. Not like there ever, ever really were with BOJ, but for BOJ, uh, they tend to, if they're not going to do anything, it tends to come out earlier. Um, and if they are going to do something, it tends to come out later. Now, with what happened last night, you know, kind of rumors that something's already in the works. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure if that changes things reaction-wise. But regardless, uh, for me and us, we'll be looking at the charts and uh, levels to probably buy some yen crosses. So we'll jump into that. That's one fact, one of the main things that I'm going to talk about today. But first off, let's just take a quick review of some of these majors. Um, I mean, look, it's been pretty much chop fest central um, since Brexit. I mean, here's Euro. I mean, you can see this is some of the ugliest, you know, one month period of trading that I can recall, to be quite honest. Um, as far as, you know, the action, the trading action, look, I, you know, the really longer term stuff, I'm sorry, I just can't, you know, get out of my mind the, um, the, the 30 year trend lines and, and everything. So, you know, for me, we're sitting kind of in the middle of nowhere support. Again, this is, uh, I think I showed this chart. This is the bullish case. Okay, I don't know if it plays out, but there's a lot of precise touches on it. So, you know, being short here is kind of, to me, is kind of being short at support. And I, not really something I think is a great, uh, great idea. Um, you know, it, the, as, I've, as I've noted, basically 111, which is the low from May 30th, and then the Brexit close, it's also the month open, which is not shown in this chart, but July is about done. Um, that to me is your kind of your your pivot. What I mean by pivot is uh, it's bearish below there, but above there, I would consider an important technical breach and uh, a breakout uh, for higher levels. And look, this is all viewed in light of kind of this chart here. Oops, wrong chart, wrong chart, this chart. Here's that US dollar chart from, this is the first one in last night's post, okay? And, you know, it's, a, it's just a major level. And yeah, I thought it was interesting that uh, you've got, you know, the, um, this period, if you will, and it's very general, right? We're not getting super precise here. You really can't at this at this juncture right here. I mean, you know, you try to get that fine and you're going to miss it or screw it up or, you know, whatever. But 
since the entire rally uh, started in 2011, you have these inflection points. Uh, major, major inflection points, kind of, you know, uh, like clockwork, every July, um, you know, the, the 2011 low was August 1st, okay, but, you know, there was a big high in 2012, big decline, to July 12th, there was a big high that divides the whole thing on July 8th, right, there was a big low uh, on July 1st, the second biggest low uh, behind the 2011 lows in 2014. And then finally, last July and August, basically you had what was, you know, kind of a topping process for, you know, half a month or so, or basically a month. This was kind of into the, uh, you know, July uh, 17th into August 12th, right? So, um, and here we are again, right? So there's different dollar pairs uh, that have different, uh, you know, characteristics like dollar yen, for example, actually looks pretty bullish, right? Um, talking about the long-term charts that have been presented recently. Euro, pound, very mixed. Aussie to me looks bullish, uh, although it is kind of at, at support and like it needs to hold it basically here, right? We did get a big rip off that uh, support into 75.64. I was expecting that even if it was going to fail, you'd at least get to 75.75 or 75.86. Uh, daily reversal resistance and the 618 did not happen. Uh, so I guess it's in the hands of the Fed at this point uh, for, you know, as far as Aussie is concerned. So very much up in limbo here. Um, Dollar Swiss is one that, you know, uh, has been uh, Swiss francs been exceptionally weak. Um, <clears throat> you do have this pretty pronounced divergence going on. I mean, you know, here's Brexit. Okay, right here. Dollar Swiss has continued higher post Brexit. And euro dollar still, you know, over here, right? Um, so there's a divergence there, which, you know, can sometimes precede turns. If you look at the price action in dollar Swiss from 623, the day before Brexit, um, which actually, you know, that low is daily reversal support here. Uh, but if you look at that, um, look, since the 623 low, you do have, this could be a wedge, right? This could be an ending diagonal in one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Here's the key with that. And, you know, the key with that is wave five can't be longer than wave three. So that means in order for that to be the case, you cannot go past 99.73. And I'm not too keen on treating this as such because you have so much stuff up around parity. You've got the 618 of the decline from the high that was back in November, right? You've got the 61 or sorry, the year open at 10007, uh, and then two equal legs from the low back in May is at 10032. And you get the trend line up there too, okay, just from the November and January highs. So, you know, that's why I don't like saying, well, if you go about past 99.73, then this is all of a sudden the biggest bullish thing in the world because what if it's some other pattern and the levels are more important than calling it whatever you want to call it pattern-wise. And then, of course, you've got this old long-term uh, – I'll probably see it better on the weekly chart, but – Let's see, here you go. You can see this old time, this old 50 line, this old median line uh, structure that kind of crosses through some pretty big inflection points um, for dollar, for Swissy. You know, so maybe Swiss is a tell uh, as far as, you know, how it reacts or how it trades uh, over the next couple of weeks. You know, if we can get up here and then find resistance. Um, 
you know, that might be something uh, to consider uh, in your general dollar analysis. So that is dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss, you know, babe, what, do I, what do I, in my notes here that I go through, I have just, you know, towards parity, but watch this one. Okay. Um, cable, as you well know, still at this super long term spot. Um, you know, I think that we could head up towards 35 to 37, uh, fill the gap at 36.49. Um, don't really care so much about whether or not we're going to fill the gap. It's just that you've got. That's kind of a messy one. Let's see if I can get a cleaner chart for you here. Here we go. This is the cleaner chart. It's just that we've got such long-term confluence of all these major levels here that, you know, it's kind of difficult to uh, to be, you know, exceptionally bearish at this level. Here's also something that could be going on. Close prices, as you know, um, can be very good for, for wave structure, understanding wave counts. And if you look at the pound dollar monthly chart back to the high from 2014, you can count this as a one, okay, two, and then one, two, three, four, five. So the Brexit decline or the decline that stretched, I should say, you know, a little bit, um, you know, post Brexit might actually be the end of a large third wave. And if we look at. If we look at where the wave three would equal wave one, it would be 133. So we're a little larger than that. When we look at the long term cycles. Remember, you have these eight year cycles going on in British pounds and it suggests and they've been extremely consistent. Um, I mean, going back to the 70s, it suggests that the next low is due in February 2017. So what if we spend from now until February trading high, sideways to higher in that fourth wave, one, two, three, four, and then make a new low in February for the fifth? Right. So something to think about from a trading perspective. That would suggest, you know, from here, that would suggest kind of higher levels. OK, and when you look at, you know, the charts that we've been looking at the last couple of days, uh, the last couple of weeks, rather, you act, you do have a five wave rally from the low, you know, and, uh, you know, this is as clean as it gets. I mean, this is unmistakably a five wave move higher. OK, I know that there's some people counting this as kind of a B. C as a flat, um, you know, to me, it just doesn't have really the right look, I guess. Uh, you know, you would have uh, C is below the origin of A anyway. You know, we looked at flats uh, in the dollar yen exchange rate. That's to me is a good example of a flat. You do go below the origin of A. Um, if this all sounds crazy talk, we'll get into it here in a little bit. But then the price action that's succeeded. Um, you know, the five wave move higher is unmistakably, you know, this is certainly not impulsive nature, impulsive weakness, right? I mean, you have three down, you know, you got a three wave rally, got a three wave decline. Okay. You know, we've got the Fed coming up here. Um, I don't know, obviously, what the deal is, what's going to happen. Sometimes they, people, you know, knee jerk reaction and, at the end of the day, the market's gone all over the place and it's kind of unchanged. Um, so we could get something like that here. Uh, but for me, it's kind of 3180 is the level. OK, that's actually a few things. I know that I had written about um, that level being the volume level, which you can see here. OK, the latest high volume level is right here, 131.80, right? Um, which as you can see was resistance yesterday. Um, but it's also the close on a daily basis from the high. The high being 
this day here, 715, okay? So getting up through that level would be, to me, would be, uh, would be kind of a trigger, a trigger event, if you will. So I'm looking higher on a breakout in the British pound. Um, and, you know, just from a simple measurement perspective, if you if this is a low down here, uh, you could get two equal legs up into the 37 mid 37s. OK, so uh, pretty significant kind of reward to risk there. On the upside. Also, you've got currently the 20-day average is 31.59. So, um, you know, just generally speaking, a 20-day average would be a good, you know, a good barrier to cut through to improve trend. Um, all right, so that's cable. You know what I'm thinking there. If we do get an initial reaction lower in cable, uh, the level to keep in mind is 29.27. Again, if this is on FOMC, uh, it's just the daily reversal support. Um, that's simply the close of uh, the low day, which is July 6. Aussie dollar uh, have gone through it a ton in the in the swing updates. We were able to get, you know, identify at least good support here. Um, you know, I'm not sure if we're going to hold after the events of last night. And by events, I just mean price. Uh, we had, you know, a great run off of this level. So, you know, we got, uh, we're able to get long actually uh, on Friday. I uh, had, you know, we had that key reversal on Thursday and I had toyed with the idea of putting an entry down at, Set basically right at 74.44, which was literally this line exactly. Uh, I did not. Instead, I wanted to get in and make sure I was in the trade. So we put 74.75. We got in. Uh, did get a nice push higher uh, to start the week. Tuesday, nice run. And then last night, uh, the knee-jerk reaction after CPI uh, went higher. And then you had the yen shenanigans come out, and it seemed that Aussie just got you know, kind of thrown out with the yen at that point for whatever reason. Um, you know, the trade is the trade. You know, uh, I understand the Fed's coming up, so you might not, you know, want to be in the trade ahead of it. But look, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I trade the chart levels and we've held for this, you know, the support for the last one, two, three, four days. This is still an uptrend. OK, you have higher highs and higher lows, even if. This is the beginning of an impulse lower. You can still see a move up into this region of 77.15, 77.30, um, you know, given the count that we've got here, okay, which is, I laid it out, you know, a couple, a week or so ago, but A, B, C, breaks it as an X wave, and then A, B, C, that's still a possibility, okay? Now, there are concerns from my standpoint on the relative strength here uh, for Aussie compared to, say, something like the Australian stock market. OK, uh, as you can see, this is the ETF for Australia. All right, and you do have an exceptionally bullish looking pattern here, okay? Um, however, we traded to a new high yesterday and have come off. And we traded to a new high yesterday, but the uh, Aussie dollar, obviously nowhere near the highs, from back in uh, back in April, okay. So that's the divergence, and that's that's a kind of a, that's just a warning. Um, 
you know, the same, you can look at the same thing happened at pretty big turns, for example, back here, uh, you know, in 2014, you had the Australian stock market at new highs, the Aussie dollar was not, okay, um, you know, that's just one example, and we have that again right here, all right, so, you know, based solely on the Australian dollar and its slope, if you will, uh, along with other things, including, you know, we looked at the, um, the analog with gold for a month prior. Uh, it's, you know, it's always got a lot of things going for it. Um, month open, 74.47. Brexit close, 74.65. Um, just a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot of support here. Okay. Uh, so if it doesn't hold, you know, so be it, the next level probably would be down towards the lower parallel at that point you know uh, well I, I shouldn't say that it'd probably be actually 7380s which is right here it's former resistance back in 2015 october and december highs okay so you know with what happens today i mean we could be obviously we could be down there uh quickly um you know see what the fed does or wants to do but uh, that's an area to pay attention to, 7380s, if we do crack this level, okay? All right, so that is the Australian dollar. Um, we'll pivot quickly to uh, Kiwi, and then we'll look at Kiwi, Aussie Kiwi. So there is no change as far as I'm concerned with uh, Kiwi. It's basically trading-wise... I'm a seller, you know, or looking to be a seller up in the 60, I should say 7130, 7150 area. Um, you know, 7130 is the month open. You've got 7150 as uh, the July or June 9th high. Um, and it, it intersects over the next few days this trend line, which was significant for a time. Again, it's the, basically the 2016 trend line. OK, because you're going from the January low, the March low, you can see the trading around here. It was, you know, support here on the way up. It was support again on Brexit. Uh, it actually was support for a day uh, in, you know, a couple a week, a week or so ago. And then you cracked it. So I'd be looking for that level to basically be resistance again. Um, and, you know, if we get there today, it's 7120s. If you get there tomorrow, it's 7130 or so. Uh, and then 69 is the level that I'm watching for support. Quite simply, a parallel of this line extended off of here, um, you know, off of the off of the low. And then, of course, the identified recently long-term line. So this would be an example. Perfect example, actually, of an original slope or an original trend line. So I hadn't recognized this until a few days ago. But you see how that was support on the low last year on August 24th, the crash? Well, then I thought was interesting was that if you took that and went off of here, you get a lot of touches and flexion points, and it was actually resistance. at the high in May and then support again on the way up. So I would be watching that level for support and it intersects 69, which of course is right here uh, in the, the previously shown line, uh, basically August, you know, first August 2nd, so early next week. So that's a level to watch. So that said, um, why don't we pivot quickly to Aussie Kiwi and then we'll look at dollar cat. So Aussie Kiwi, we've got the uh, the broad, still forming bottoming pattern, or I believe, right, the head and shoulders pattern that's been going on for two plus years, or almost two years, I should say. And we have held this resistance, wrote about it, uh, I think actually the day before the high, we said that we could get resistance up here. 
and we have pulled back and we are now nearing support level for support okay quite simply that level for support is former range highs um, you've got this parallel okay uh, it's you know 105.30 or so uh, is the level to watch if we zoom in you can see a clean impulsive rally and then it looks like we're working down in A, B, uh, one, two, maybe three, maybe a little bounce in four or five. So, you know, over the next couple of days, tomorrow into Friday, we'll be watching for a low in Aussie Kiwi, the 105.30 to 105.50 region. Um, not sure if we have any fibs down there. I think one of them is a 50% retracement, though. Yeah, you've got the 50% at 105.40, 618 at 104.87. Um, you know, for me, a stop would most likely just be below here. It's 104.27. Yeah, you can, you know, A, B, one, two, maybe working on a third, maybe a fourth, fifth for a C wave. Um, but, yeah, this is, you know, this is a potential biggie. It's, you know, it takes the big ones. They take a very long time to set up. And it's hard to catch them because usually they will lull you to sleep before they're ready to go. And then once they do go, you find it hard to get in because you're basically, you have to chase. Um, but that's, you know, that's what we'll be watching for here with Aussie Kiwi. Uh, you know, the idea is opportunities that have, you know, limited definable risk and uh, significant upside potential. And that's what I do think Aussie Kiwi represents on the upside Okay, what about dollar CAD? Well, dollar CAD, and you know we're in pound CAD right now. Um, but dollar CAD, you know the if I look at it on the monthly, and you know the law. I know I've said this in these in these webinars before, but the longer I'm in this game. The more I come to rely, I think, on longer term charts, um, you know, you kind of understand like where the big moves are much better. So, you know, for me, I mean, like one, you know, 138 is such a huge level. It's the year open. There's a FIB confluence there. You've got this median line there. Uh, it's just an attracted area. So I, I think we actually get to 138 in dollar cat. Okay. Thing is, I'm aware that 133, 55 week average, also the 200 day, they're usually about the same thing. I'm aware that 133, uh, you've got the slope lines there too. I'm aware that 133 could could kind of pose some problems, right? So, it, you know, why? What's the point of knowing that? Well, the point of knowing that is if I see dollar CAD going up into 133, right? I'm not gonna get scared and chase it and buy it and end up getting suffering a hundred or 200 point pullback. Okay. You know, you'll get breakouts, you'll get pullbacks, fake outs after the breakout, and then you can try to buy the dip. Okay. With a tight, with a better stop and better reward to risk. Okay. Um, you know, as we head into today, uh, with, with the fed, you know, I'm kind of looking at this 31, 20, 31, 40 level. It's still, still as as your as your support. Uh, I don't know if it gets in there. You know, the this morning it looked like we might try to go. We got to 31.56, and then uh, you had a really crappy uh, number come out uh, for crude oil for inventories, and um, they're expected to shrink. They build, and crude's just you know gone gone off the uh, off the deep end. So, you know, despite that. Dollar CAD is relatively unchanged. Um, obviously, part of that probably has to do with waiting on the Fed, 
but uh, you know crude's down 2.6 percent right now as I speak. So you know dollar cat is pretty muted in that reaction. Um, but you know 3120, 3140, that's the level to buy it. Okay, and I would have a stop under 3050. Okay, uh, that's the low from uh, last. What was that Friday? Okay, so right here. All right, 133 be an area where you could take some take some off if the market gets up into that region. Um, you know, it's one where you could see failure. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, dollar cad. Yeah, one of the better looking charts I think at this at this point the stage. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that looks like crap out there as far as they say euro and the chop and everything like that. But dollar cad actually is a pretty good looking chart. Okay. All right, now let's get into the yen stuff because this is the, this is the, uh, you know, maybe where the opportunities are, where there's risk, there's opportunity. Um, here's what we looked at heading into this week. Um, you know, everyone should be familiar with the 52-week average on um, on dollar yen. And if you're not, here it is. Okay, so instances when the dollar yen exchange rate falls 13% below its 52 week average. Why 13? That's just where we were last week. And I thought it was interesting that once you looked at the instances when that happens, I'm, uh, you know, every single time since 1988, the market has gone back to its 52 week average within four to six months. OK, so if, you know, this happened uh, again on, you know, July, so says that by probably November uh, at the earliest, we will be back at 111 plus. OK, uh, given these current schizo type of markets, it might be much quicker than that that's all you know I'm saying so this is the reason for me wanting to be long dollar yen or wanting to you know being constructive dollar yen here's the hourly chart and again we had this five wave move up a here remember we got long because the understanding the thinking was that maybe this was just the all the correction was it was just on the turkey coup stuff uh, and then you gapped higher, maybe we're going to run away. It did not happen that way. Instead, we got a flat, and this is what I'm talking about. When you get a flat, you get A, new high in B, and then you actually drop below the origin of A, which you know makes this an expanding pattern. Um, now, I guess if you wanted to get real technical about it, you would actually, in textbook, like you'd actually label this WXY because this is a three, okay? In any case, the implication is the same, and that's that you know yen is going to be weak. In other words, dollar yen is going to go higher. Um, if I look at it on just say a daily chart, if you go two equal legs from the low at 103.98, you get 111.50. 20 day average hold that is a good setup in itself wrote about that last week um, again you know trend change first test the 20 day average um, so this is where you know we get into where's you know where's the possible entry for this for dollar yen I would probably just be looking you know areas of former reaction so you know, that puts you kind of in the 105, 105, 10 area. Okay. Uh, 105, 105, 10. As I've said, I think Euro again is a better looking, um, a better looking chart on the short term. Okay. Uh, you've got, you know, the dot drop, a three wave move to a new high B wave, and then this sharp decline. Um, which did not quite get to the area we wanted. We wanted 11370s. You know, there's still, I guess, you know, obviously a lot to go this week uh, as far as event risk is concerned. But I do like how this is 
pushed higher, um, you know, in, in a fairly sharp fashion. And you've got the turkey coup attempt low, which happens to line up with the low back here in mid-June before Brexit. You've also got, um, you know, a slope line here. And then again, as I, I just put that chart up on Twitter, you've got the 618 of this run higher from last night, all at the same area. So it's like 11540 to 11547 or so. So for me, that is kind of the where I'm honing in for yen over the next couple of days uh, as we get into BOJ um, is 11540, 115.50. Okay, those are the kind of the real nice looking levels. And then Amir wants some pound yen. You got it, my man. Uh, we'll look at some pound yen. <clears throat> We're going to start by going out real far. Essentially, this is a monthly chart. Essentially, pound yen hit a trend line that goes back to lows from 2011 and 2012. You're about to make, you know, again, we have BOJ, but assuming that yen crosses don't crash on the last day of the month, um, Friday is the last day of the month. You're going to get a big monthly reversal uh, on pound on pound yen. Okay, so that's a good look on the weekly chart. If we draw that same trend line, okay, and you were to have a channel back here, remember this chart from back before uh, Brexit, actually. First of all, that went through a gap. Gaps are important. So I always say gaps are just like highs and lows. They're important technical events. So the market went through that gap, giving it some more added significance. And then right before Brexit, it was support, right? And we rallied from that thing, from 145.30 up to the pre-Brexit high of 160, 1,500 points, and then we came right back, okay, on Brexit, obviously, and went to new lows. But what you have there is former, this line is basically former, you know, uh, resistance and support and goes through the gap, what you'd be looking at is that is actually now your resistance that's near 146. Okay, so you're currently trading close to 139. 146 is your first big resistance, roughly. Um, so it's a good bit of distance from here. Okay, going to the daily chart. You can count a completed wave. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. Okay. Uh, and then this ended up being not a triangle, but ended up being kind of WXY. And then into Brexit, one, two, Brexit, three, four, five. Okay. So to me, that says we go back to at least 164 because that's the former fourth wave. All right. Um, near term, we get down to the nitty gritty and the trading part of it. Here's your slope. Again, this goes all the way back to last June high. It's your original slope, okay? Just yesterday we found support on this uh, former former support, providing support again on downtrend support, okay? So when you look at this from a wave perspective, this is probably, from a pattern perspective, this is the cleanest one. From a um, levels perspective, I was looking at 135.70 for Euro Yen, as the cleanest one. But you can see this is a beautiful one, two, three, four, five. Okay, A, B, C, not the cleanest C wave, but whatever. 
Um, you did come into what would be considered structural support on Elliott, which is the former fourth wave of one less degree, which really was support kind of to the tick um, at 135.95. 136.37 was the fourth wave low. Fib wise, you did hold the 50% to the tick. The 61.8 is down at 134.24. Again, with all the stuff that's going on here, I'm not sure if you get to that level, um, the 134s that is. And if we were to actually extend where it was we'd be looking, the 1618. Of this rally, if you were to go higher in a third, sends you back to 140, 159.40s, which is basically the Brexit high, which is interesting. Uh, also, and just as important, sometimes more so, look what you've got here. That's the monthly opening price. It's 137.22. We dipped below it yesterday, closed above it. Here we are now well above it. 137.22 is a support to watch for. So pretty much Euro and Yen, sorry, Euro and Yen, Euro Yen and Pound Yen are two of the ones that I think you could get absolutely screamers on the upside over the next couple of weeks and and really in months and longer. Um, you know, the levels again so much cleaner to me on 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 uh, on Euro Yen. It might actually be worth – got this trend line here to follow for pound yen. It might be worth just following euro yen, you know, and getting – which is that – what do we write? The um, the one – the turkey coup attempt low at one, 115.45. It might be better to actually just kind of – you know, one thing, simplifying things. OK, it, it key for trading. Trading's hard enough, so simplify stuff. Uh, and in this case, let's say that you want to buy both euro yen and pound yen, right? Well, we know that the euro yen level is a big one at 115.45, right? We've got the turkey coup attempt low. We've got the low from June 16th. Um, remember, we were actually long here and then. That thing happened. I was like, I'm get the hell out because at that point, I was like, well, we're going to go down here. Of course, it didn't. Uh, but here we are back. We might end up buying the same level anyway, 115.45. But if you know 115.45 is kind of your sweet spot for, uh, you know, for Euro Yen, that's where your that's where your fastball comes in. And that's where you want to, you know, swing for the fences. So if that's 115.45, kind of keep an eye on Euro Yen. When Euro Yen gets to 115.45, you know, just take a shot at Euro Yen and Pound Yen, you know, because it, with things being kind of Yen centric these days, I mean, Pound's got a little more vol to it, uh, obviously, right now than Euro does. Euro's pretty much dead. But it, with things being Yen centric, it's more than likely that they're going to trade together anyway, right? Um, it's not like, you know, Pound Yen is driving Pound, or it's not like Pound's driving Pound Yen and Euro Yen, Euro's driving Euro Yen. Yen's driving all the Yen crosses at this point. Okay. So uh, it might be worth just kind of, you know, following that even before BOJ, because God knows this market right now kind of loves a rumor uh, or whatever. So you might get some of these levels hit anyway, even before you get into the event on Friday uh, or Thursday night, depending on where you are. AMD asking about oil. Let me see. I cannot click on that link for some reason. Um, copy email address. Okay, let's see here. Let me see if I can get that. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I can click on it now. Okay, so you mind how? So this is what you have here. Okay, yes. All right, so yeah, you've got the right deal going on here. Um, let me show you what I was, what I would look at. In fact, why don't we just do some crude oil together real quickly? Um, before I do that, I do want to show uh, the Nikkei because.
you got to remember there's reasons to be like massively long-term bullish the Nikkei and yen crosses okay trend line back to 1996 that held in 2016 in february it held again well we didn't quite get to it just a month ago eventually the Nikkei is going up here all right it's going to double from here okay um, the downside to me is limited to 14,000 or so. Now, that's a pretty good argument for yen crosses, wouldn't you say? Here's the Nikkei. This is a chart I was going to show um, going into, uh, well, going into BOJ, but of course they kind of screwed it uh, with all the rumors and stuff last night. But you've got. Um, You've got the slope here, so if you want to draw this on your chart, on the you know the Nikkei or the the JPN 225 uh, is the symbol. JPN 225 is the CFD. Just draw a trend line here, okay? That's all it is, and then you can see that you're following the slope pretty well. Okay, so here's the median line, as you can see, it just support just now. So uh, if you get, you know, a dip here with this, I, you know, kind of think that you eventually resolve this higher. Thing is with BOJ and what this market, what this pattern suggests, is it actually suggests that you're going to get one, two, three, four. It suggests that you're going to get a fifth wave high on BOJ, okay? So you might get a really big run on yen crosses for like a day or, or so. You know, the dangerous thing about assuming that is that sometimes you get these extended fifth waves, especially if something they do something really crazy in which you could get all the way up here, you know, to say 18,000 or something. You know, that would be basically up above the highs from, from January. And then you could pull back again. So uh, either way, the picture is bullish until you get to new highs in, in, in the Nikkei. OK, um, and then we're going to do oil together. And yeah, let's take a look at oil. So and Leon also had a question. He said, can dollar yen and yen pairs rise even the stock market declines? So here's the thing with that, Leon. Um, the stock market is at the U.S. stock market is at highs. Uh, that. So the U.S. stock market is up here, and dollar yen is way down here. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that they can move in opposite direction. They don't have to go in the same direction, right? Like you get periods, lengthy periods, you know, where they go in the opposite direction, right? Um, you know, there's periods when the dollar yen exchange rate has gone higher and the stock market's gone lower. It happened all throughout the early 2000s. So don't assume that just because we're close to 2200 in the S&P, and I think we do top up there, but don't expect, uh, you know, just because that happens that dollar yen has to crash. I know it sounds crazy, like they for them to for for the for the S and P to go lower and dollar yen to go um, to go higher, but over time it's it's happened before. It will happen again. Question is when and if it's this time. Uh, I actually think looking at that Nikkei chart that you get a big rip higher over the next few days, probably sends dollar yen again crosses higher with the S and P to 2200. Then you get a pullback in both. And then they go their separate ways where yen crosses can go higher, the Nikkei can go higher, and the S&Ps can kind of consolidate and go lower. 
um, but we'll try to play through that as we uh, as we get into into the uh, into the patterns. All right, so let's look at crude oil. So you want to look at the 60 minute chart, okay? All right, let's look at the 60 minute chart. I find that the longer term charts are better. Uh, obviously, um, you know, for the way that I, I trade, but we'll look at the 60 minute chart. So if we look at just kind of, again, the original slope off here, which is always the best one. Oops, that's not even the right one. The original slope, I'm gonna go four hour, if that's all right. Just so I can bring in the whole thing here. You know, so the, what, what I'll do is I'll kind of like look at, okay, so there's obviously some good, some good, uh, you know, touches there, three touches. Okay, so I'll take that line, I'll copy that. Okay, here, not a whole lot going on there. This is the one I was following before, which is the one that you have drawn. Not a whole lot as far as, uh, you know, resistance on the median line, yes, but nothing nothing's you know spectacular uh i would still follow this um what you have right here okay on this chart with this break first of all you are at support from horizontal levels okay this is support going back to the march high of 2016 and the march low of 2015 okay um You do have a, so you've broken support, okay, this line here. This 50 line, which is the one that I wrote about a couple days ago, which was at 44 at the time, is still your level to watch for resistance. It's about, I guess, 4360s, 4370s at this point. This, you can see this line, this is a steeper line right here. This looks like the one that we might want to end up following now. OK, at least in the near term, because the market is now. OK, so there you go. This looks like the one to follow at this point. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now. So since we've broken that lower parallel on like the slope that's not as steep, I would follow this. OK. Um, this goes off the 629 high, the 711 low, and your 721 high. And you can see all the levels that you cross through here, okay? The median line here is absolutely fantastic as far as the number of touches that you have. Just resistance this morning. So your support is going to be down in this region, which is 41.12, which again is actually close to a triangle target. Okay, here, draw that. Oh, sorry, that's not the right one, is it? No, we were going here. There we go, this one. So this is a triangle target, A, B, C, D, E, okay? Extend the width of this range, you get 4112. 4112 looks like your sweet spot as far as a bounce level because you have the steeper slope here, okay? After that happens, you might end up getting a rebound at which point you'd be looking for resistance. Uh, you know, it'd probably have to do a little more work with horizontal levels at that point. But you'd probably be looking for resistance, uh, you know, wave count wise, median line or here, okay, because of this this one right here. All right, so that is your crude oil chart there in real time. Uh, 
4112 is the level for support on this if you're going to get a bounce you know bigger picture here's your uh, here's your your chart on the, the bigger picture here let me go to daily again this is the one where we're looking at the slopes all the way back and well I 4112 is a level to pay attention to as I just said but you know would not be all that surprised to see this thing try to spill all the way down here either because that's where these slope lines are are that um, you know originate from highs all the way back in 2013 and 14 okay so I hope that helps uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. We've got FOMC. Again, there's no presser. There's no Q&A. Uh, there's no forecast. All it is is a statement and what they are doing or not doing. Um, and uh, again, we will wait with eager, eager anticipation. Um, does look like we are getting a bit of a pop here in pound and cad. Pound cad, actually. I remember that. We got lucky this morning. We That stop was missed by a couple pips. Uh, and I here we are now heading higher so far. So that seems to be working out. We'll just let it run, see what it can do. Um, all right, so that's it for now. Again, I'll get this archived. You got fed in three minutes, two minutes and 40 seconds. So um, take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll have this archived up later, and uh, we'll see what the Fed's got for in store for us, all right? All right. Take care. Bye.